This is the Studer A827 24 track recorder. Seen here with a trolley mounted remote controller, it was the last analog multi track recorder product made by the Swiss company. The successor to the A820 2 inch 24 track, the A827 made some cost saving compromises to Studer's multi track offering. In an effort to keep analog recording in the studio environment a viable proposition, as nearing its introduction the ascendancy of digital multi-track recording was clear and its takeover not far away. The A827 borrowed heavily from the A820 using a near identical transport, although the heads were 318 types, an improvement over the 317s used before. Most cost savings were made in two areas, simplified audio electronics, and a removal of noise reduction, and also some control features found on the A820. In this image of an A820, you can see the three card racks slid out from under the deck plate, each holding eight complete audio channels worth of cards. The A820 card functions were on discrete cards per channel, i.e. one card for the record amps, another for the replay, and a further one for the sync function and this in turn required expensive hardware racks and labour-intensive internal interconnection wiring. The A827 used a single card for two channels for all audio functions, and this image shows the 12 cards, and we'll come on to these in more detail a little later. Here we have an overview of the transport, and the lineage of the A820 is unmistakable with the space spool hubs capable of taking 14-inch reels, the many guides and rollers either side of the head block, the forward mounting pinch roller contacting with the back of the tape, and head type aside, the same head block design. In the front are the large transport buttons that Stude adopted for all their large footprint machines from the A80 onwards. It's the overbridge where the other obvious cost savings were made. Gone were the multi-display options of the A820 LED meters and their function buttons to be replaced with moving coil VU meters, the same type of which can be found on the consumer grade Revox 270 series machines, and it has to be said, they are nowhere near the same quality as the meters found on the Studa A800. Incidentally, the two lights flashing on the channel 3 VU meter are indicating that this is the channel the alignment settings are acting on at this time. Moving on to the alignment controls, these use the same display and operational approach as the A820, but the big grey counter function control buttons have gone to be replaced with controls that are much more streamlined. It's here that the different tape types the machine can be aligned for are selected, as well as the three speeds of 7.5, 15 and 30 ips it can run at. The head block cover has been removed from this machine as it was being aligned during the shooting of this video. Unlike the A800 and the A820 where the record action of each track can be set either on the remote unit or on the machine, the A827 has to have the remote controller to do this. Again another cost saving by not duplicating these buttons. Back to the 12 audio cards. These are located under the transport deck plate. External connection for audio, control and power are made both by connections on a back mounted basis board and an umbilical connector seen here on a lead at the front of the card. The cards are removed from the crate by removing the umbilical connector and then releasing the top and bottom catches. A legend on the rear of the fold down front flap shows a schematic of a card with the location of the hardware jumpers and adjustment controls. So that's our overview of the Studer A827 24-track multi-track recorder.